So, Corinne, you were saying that there was a, this is the town of like a lot of firsts. What do you mean by that? Absolutely. So, it's one of the most, one of the first established cities where they have the first ever theater with the Dock Theater, the first municipal college of the College of Charleston, which is still one of the most popular colleges in the South today. Yesterday, when we were in the town, they were talking about a sense of community, a sense of pride, and how the community comes together, you know, and they try to better their lives and better the community. Do you find that that's kind of what it's like here as well? Absolutely. I mean, coming from California and having San Francisco being where we went to, back in the 70s and 80s, San Francisco felt like sort of this small, cool place you could go visit. Yeah. And it's kind of reminiscent of coming to Charleston. As much as there are 850,000 people in the Charleston metro area, it still maintains that small town feel when you come to downtown Charleston. Mm -hmm. And it's very accessible, it's very approachable. Yeah. You can still come into downtown Charleston on a Saturday night uh -huh. and walk into restaurants. May not be the exact one you want, but there's so many options yeah. that you can, you don't have to plan months ahead. So here we're at the Pineapple Fountain. Pineapples are very significant to Southern hospitality and Southern charm. During the Civil War days when soldiers were gone, prior to them returning, the neighbors and people welcoming them home would put a pineapple on their stoop. So it was a way to welcome people home. And so now the pineapple is pretty significant to anywhere in South Carolina as far as welcoming people home. Corinne, is there anything else you want to share about this particular area? And can you tell all of our members what um, what we what else we have to look forward to today while we're so a couple more things we're going to hit in Charleston before we leave is that we have an open air the Charleston open air market which is a great place where local artisans bring their crafts their soaps their artwork their um, t-shirts their their goods and services into an open air market that's open every day and then you know there's just amazing I wish I could show you everything there's amazing restaurants there's amazing shopping King Street is one of the biggest shopping destinations in all of South Carolina, definitely the Charleston area. Here we are at the end of the waterfront pier in Charleston. And then across the waterway, you have the Ravenel Bridge, which is one of the most iconic bridges in the Charleston area. It gets lit up at night. It's really beautiful. It's a beautiful bridge to drive over. And especially when you see the sunsets across the intercoastal waterways, it's breathtaking. And then as you continue back over, you see the harbor over at Shem Creek and Mount Pleasant. So we'll go visit there next. Awesome. So here we are at the city market in downtown Charleston. It's an open air market where local artisans can sell their wares. So I'm talking about restaurants. The highest concentration of some of the top restaurants in Charleston are all along this stretch right here on East Bay. So this is where like whenever the um, like people come out and do like victory speeches or things like that, a lot of times they'll do those PR events here. So these are shrimping boats. I was saying during shrimping season, you're allowed to come down here and just bring your cooler and buy shrimp right off the boats. All sorts of great restaurants here. Vickery's, there's a bunch of waterfront restaurants that kind of do live music and lots of festivals here whenever they do the Cooper Run Bridge, which is the Ravenel Bridge that we ran or drove across. They do a run across it and they do a big after party in Shem Creek. Okay. Hey, it's David Berry again. I'm here with Brian, all the way from San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of a ways away from San Diego, I gotta say. Yeah, it was a trek to get over here, but we're happy to be here. California has definitely become a place that you feel very restricted on your freedoms as an American. 
And that was a big uh, reason why my wife and I chose to leave. Mm -hmm. Arguably, probably the best weather on the planet in San Diego uh, to come out here to Charleston. You get great weather here. Very historic, this town. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Charleston is hundreds of years old. Back to colonial times. Mm -hmm. You've got Fort Sumter just across the way over here, uh, which was the start of the Civil War. You've got a lot of history here. You've got military here in the area. Uh, uh, you've got manufacturing in the area because this is a very low cost of business area. So there's just so much to bring people here. And as, as Corinne was saying, downtown, you've got festivals, you've got entertainment, you've got restaurants. Corinne was telling us about all of these amazing restaurants on the water. Uh, where are we at again? And explain what, what is, this is amazing, by the way. We're at Vickery's on Shem Creek. It's a really good spot because there's some really fun restaurants all along this whole creek. But Terry, you've been talking about this for weeks now, and here we are. We're finally in Charleston. What do you think? So, what do you think? I'm telling you, and I haven't been to Charleston probably in 10 years, and I can't believe the change that has happened here, all for the better. All for the better. Lots of new places to live, lots of new restaurants. This place is just thriving. And I, you know, as, as Corinne told us earlier, it's not just people coming from California, people coming from all over the country, all over the world to come to Charleston because of the culture, because of the history, because of the great lifestyle you can have here. <laughs> so Terry, we made it to the beach. <laughs> Can you believe it? We're at the beach. Nice. Wait, we should have. You I should have my gonna, shoes off. I changed to flip flops. Bring your bathing suit and everything. What? And your flip flops? <laughs> what happened? I decided to go commando today. Oh no! Look, where's that no. nude beach? Nobody wants before? to see that. No, no uh, nude beaches here. So uh, we have beach options in this community. It Amazing like. beach options. So we're standing here on Sullivan's Island, one of the many beach communities that we have in the Charleston area. So Charleston sort of sits in the middle of two communities to the north and a couple of communities to the south. Right over here, right across the way, across this uh, intercoastal waterway is Charleston, where we were just hanging out for the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're in Sullivan's Island, so it's the closest beach to Charleston. It's about four miles away from the Ravenel Bridge. So we're in Somerville, and uh, I guess this is this community is about 45 minutes outside of town, and we're in a new build. So maybe, obviously, you're the expert, so maybe you could explain the area and what's going on. Absolutely. So now we're in Somerville, South Carolina. We're about 25 miles inland from Charleston and Mount Pleasant, where we were earlier this morning. Okay. This is one of the biggest master plan subdivision communities in the Somerville area and a great example of different builders and different options. We're going to visit a model home from New Leaf Builders, voted uh, the second best builder in Charleston for two years in a row. So let's go see what they have. Well, you know, and you explained a concept that we don't have in Las Vegas, but I love the concept. Mm -hmm. So basically you were explaining to me that you pick your lot and then you pick your builder. And that's not very common in Las Vegas, but I love the concept. So how does that work? So actually you would pick your builder first. So when oh. you come into these situations and you visit, you choose Nexton as a community, you will go through the model row. Each of the builders, there are seven builders in this section of the Midtown section of Nexton. So each builder has a model home. So you can go in there and each model home is stocked with a sales okay. agent from that builder. I see. So you would go through and pick the style and the finishes and the feel of the home that you like. Right. Obviously each builder has more models and floor plans than sure, what they're showcasing here. Yeah. But once you kind of get an idea of a couple of the homes that work for you from a builder, yeah. then those builders are assigned certain lots within the community. So then you can yeah. pick the floor plan, the builder, see which lots are possible to build That's, that house okay. on, Got and it. then choose from there. Okay, well now let's yep. see this amazing home. Come on in. We're airing the, the entrance foyer. This is our Aneta floor plan. We have two different collections. Um, one collection has the rear garage, so you are alleyway entry, mm -hmm. and then the other has a front garage. Sweet. The thing that's very unique about New Leaf Builders is we're the only one that does the courtyard. Mm -hmm. So all of our homes will have a courtyard. 
And then we also offer the option of an out villa. This house has a great open floor plan with a wet bar behind you, so you can have appetizer and drinks entertaining as well as being able to socialize with your guests while you are cooking. So a very popular option of late has been to have a downstairs master bedroom. So this one is accommodating that with nice openness to the backyard and a grand master bathroom, complete with a walk-in shower. The biggest things here, since we are very social and the weather is so accommodating, a lot of times you'll see amazing outdoor spaces and not really giant living rooms. That's something that people kind of adjust to when they come here. So look at this amazing outdoor space. She was talking about the courtyard that they have here, which is a feature of new leaf builders. So here we have a studio casita complete with a kitchen with a sink and a wet bar. So another very popular option in homes in the Charleston area is to have this flex space at the top of the stairs on the second story. This allows for families to have a separate space for kids to watch TV, do homework, or have a playroom. I'd be remiss to show you a home in Charleston without a porch because it is so popular in the Charleston area and such a big part of the aesthetic here to have these front porches. This is another place where we gather and socialize and have appetizers and morning cocktail or morning coffee and afternoon cocktails or a glass of wine to wind out the day. I hope you're enjoying your tour of Charleston. I've been so happy to show you around what I call home now after leaving California. I would be more than happy to help you find your new home in Charleston. So here we are at one of the amenity, one of the many amenity centers in Nexton subdivision. There are several different places like this throughout the community, depending on the different subsections in the subdivision. But you can see we have the infinity pool with the loungers, the fountains for the kids. <laughs> All sorts of fun to be had in these communities. Plus you have clubhouse areas that you can rent out. So now we are in downtown Somerville, the last stop on our tour. We talk a lot about Charleston being a large area, you know, 850,000 people in the whole Charleston area. That's a lot of people area. There, yeah. But one of the things that people love about it is it really has this small town charm. So it has a small town feel with big city amenities. And this is one of the things that makes the personality of Somerville. It is a self-proclaimed birthplace of sweet tea. So a few years ago, they decided to go for the world or the Guinness Book of World Records largest sweet tea ever brewed. Let's go take a look at the square and I can show you where all the events and everything happened here. Sounds good. So right now we're in the middle of Hutchinson Square. So this is the epicenter of the historic district of Somerville. Oh. This is a great area down here it really is where the community comes together for so many different events. They do an Oktoberfest, they do Scarecrows on the Square. We have a community theater where a lot of kids do productions, the Flower Town Players. There's coffee shops, there's paint and sip, there's tapas places, sushi places, great restaurants here and ax throwing. I think you and I just said wow like about 14 <laughs> times. Wow. And thank you so right. much. Thank you so thank much you guys. Thank you so much for visiting. Karen. It was a great pleasure to finally yes. meet you in person. Yes, I love that. We are Wrapping up our day, uh, what an amazing day. The weather's been perfect. Everything we've been seeing Terry today has been fantastic. We have Chuck and Jill, uh, there are members. I believe you guys are members on both Leading California and Life After yes. California. And I, go, I know you guys have shared some experiences and you've tried to help other people. And that's what we have as a community that helps people and educates people to what life is like. Because there's a lot of our members are 50-50. They're not sure if they should leave or not. So. Uh, let's start out with first, where are you guys from in, in California? We're in Central California, okay. Fresno, Plumas area. Okay. okay. Which was a fairly conservative community, basically agricultural based right. area. Yeah. So Somerville has changed a lot in the years you've been here. Yes, it has. And there's a lot of traffic right now. A lot of pop, it's very popular. Very popular. And and what, and because of the culture, because of the, all the, the community, because of all that it offers a, a lot in our neighborhood community a lot of the northeastern people are moving here because there's no snow mm -hmm. and a lot of also no and that's when you regulations and the noise yeah. yeah and um so yes there are a lot of people coming and a lot of people who have gotten here and little Somerville is going to have to put on big boy pants and grow yes. and they are we have a lot of members that that are thinking about leaving and um that's the one thing that Terry has done such a great job on is developing stories and sharing stories and 
if you if you guys were going to give somebody advice from our groups, what would you tell them if they were thinking about making this move and doing this? I would say, you do your research. Don't make any big moves until you researched it online, mm -hmm. gotten feedback from other people, right. gone to the place, stayed for at least five to seven days. Yeah, kind of get the vibe. Talk to people in the yeah, yeah. Otherwise. You might be disappointed. From the bottom of our heart, I mean, we really want to thank both of you guys for coming out because it means so much to the community to hear people's stories and to hear that there's really life after sure. California, just like what he developed. There yeah. is life after California. Right. There is freedom. And for you guys to just kind of drop everything and be here for us, it really means a lot. And enjoy, you guys, and enjoy the last year's, you know, exactly. Exactly. Just to well, try to do it. Exactly.